Hi, welcome to our show. Uh, I mean, what we were doing, walk the talk uh, at the Central Vista. Instead, we are doing sit and talk on the Central Vista issue. And as you know, we're doing a series of episodes. Uh, this, the, the, the whole issue of redevelopment of the Central Vista, right from the Rashtrapati Bhavan to India Gate along the Rajpath. Uh, and we, as we have pointed out, a lot many buildings are going to be torn down. A new parliament is going to come up. And today we are very fortunate to have with us uh, Mr. Ram Rehman. Uh, thanks, Ram, for uh, joining our show. And uh, let me also uh, apprise you that Ram happens to be someone who uh, not just inherits the DNA of, uh, I mean, uh, of, uh, of uh, Mr. Habib Rahman, uh, who was the, the principal architect uh, with CPWD, in fact, was brought by Nehru to construct the post-independence Central Vista buildings along the Central Vista. Uh, but also uh, the intellectual who also inherits the intellectual uh, DNA. Uh, so, uh, Ram, I think uh, straight away, if we, if we have to start, I mean, you're taking... <laughs> no, I'm only smiling yeah. because, yeah. you know, he didn't design any yeah. of the buildings on Central Vista. No, but apart from that, yeah. no, but I, I saw in one of his interviews, I mean, he has a comment on the, on the Central Oh, yeah, 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 there's a lot run. on the building yeah. of New yeah. Delhi. So, we'll talk about that. Yeah. So the, f the foremost question that uh, uh, I think which is uh, uh, really uh, coming to the fore is that the government uh, is actually propounding a theory that look, we have to Indianize the Indian architecture. And uh, one of the reasons uh, that is pushing this whole redevelopment process is uh, this uh, Indianization of the architecture. And if uh, I may ask, because we've done uh, episodes even in the past where uh, Latin's Delhi mm -hmm. uh, was considered to be quite syncretic to the Indian mm -hmm. ethos because they left the British architecture in Calcutta. And of course, when Nehru uh, uh, was planning uh, the, the, the development along the Central Vista and, uh, and other buildings, that also contributed a lot to the, the creation and construction of new buildings. So, I mean, if we discuss all these three phases from the Latians to 1947 and then from the 1947 to the present era and this whole process of redevelopment, how do you really capture all this? Well, you see, Delhi has an interesting architectural history because um, uh, Shah Jahanabad, which was built by Shah Jahan, was the great medieval, post-medieval city, which was a very urban center. When the and east of that, and you know, between that and Tughlaqabad, etc., were all the ruined seven cities of Delhi. So it was scattered with ruins, there was a lot of open land. When the British decide to shift the capital in um, 1912, when they make that decision, uh, after a lot of debate, etc., they uh, figure on that Raisina Hill, uh, where that village was, down to the Jamuna, where they'll build their imperial city. You know, and all of this you've already discussed with many of the historians and um, sociologists and architects in your series. But you see what happens with the building of uh, CPWD building of Delhi, particularly the Central Vista, which is done by architects, who, the, a very handful of architects who had been trained in India. We only had three schools of architecture when India became independent. Uh, they were more engineered engineering schools, yeah. you know, that had been actually set up by the British. And New Delhi was built all by uh, British architects. Some of these architects who remained in PWD had worked at that last phase with, the, with yeah. the British architects. So the buildings that you're talking about, like Shastri Bhavan, Udyog Bhavan, Nirman Bhavan, etc., were designed by architects uh, like Diolalikar, who, as my father says, you know, in this long interview, which was done in 1989, uh, he was the first chief architect after independence of the Central Public Works Department, uh, after the British. Now, there's an interesting history to that, because I'll quote from here, uh, which is my father's narrative. Which is this comes from an interview that he... Yeah, this was an interview done by Molloy Chatterjee, who was a, a professor at the School of Planning and Architecture, and uh, has been very involved in actually documenting the history of the building of New Delhi. So this is, uh, this is the quote. Nehru was disturbed by developments along Central Vista, 
Deolalika's bhavans did not appeal to him. Bilimoria's bhavans were under construction and Nehru was apprehensive. In those days, a national library and a national theatre were proposed along Central Vista. This was actually Latyans' plan and it's a very important part that we should talk about the Central Vista, that crossing of what we then renamed Janpath yeah. and Rajpath. There was to be the uh, National Archives, which was built by Latyans. Okay. And the theatre, which had been designed uh, uh, by Mansingh Rana, never got built. But that was incorporated into the Indira Gandhi okay. National Centre. And on the other side was the National Museum, which was uh, designed by Deolalikar. And that was 1950, yeah. I think finished in 54, yeah, yeah. 55. And that was very much taking the idiom of Latyans, but in Deolalikar's, you know, own way. So and when you say idiom of Latyans, I mean, could you just define that? Yeah, Maybe you see what, uh, what Latyans... Uh, devised for building Delhi. Now, you, you know, at this time when uh, New Delhi is being designed, the modern movement has already exploded in yeah. Europe. So you've got uh, the Bauhaus has been set up, uh, Walter Gropius, the, uh, the Russian constructivists, the okay. Dutch architects are all building highly modernist yeah. housing and office buildings. Now, what Latians was doing was completely different from that. He was still harking back to a classicism, okay. which was imperial. Okay. That was the whole notion that the British wanted to do. But the ambition was very great. Okay. Because Shoe Smith, who was one of the architects, uh, has a wonderful quote saying that what Latins uh, devised, which he called the Delhi order, okay. uh, including for the columns and the detailing, it was actually the last gasp of the Italian Renaissance. Oh, so it's, so the, so, I mean, the premise of the idiom is the Renaissance. Yes, okay. it is completely taking what Palladio started in okay. Renaissance Italy, okay. taking Palladio's classicism and New Delhi was going to be the grand end point right. of that style. So the ambition was very, you know, was yeah. very big. So here, um, uh, as I said, the National Library and the National Theatre were proposed along Central Vista. Rana's proposal was shelved and incorporated into the IGNCA. So Nehru set up a Central Vista committee in 1959 mm -hmm. because he was so, um, you know, concerned about the building of New Delhi, but in a very democratic manner. And he had brought these young architects like my father, like Kanvinde, to Delhi from different cities in India. Um, it was a sort of mini art commission with Joglikar, Benjamin, Bilimoria, Kanvinde, Bijit Ghosh and myself amongst the members. Meetings were chaired by Dharam Veera, then Secretary, Ministry of Works and Housing. We could not succeed in improving Bilimoria's bhavans because Joglikar kept insisting that the designs were final and construction had started. So Joglika is the, is the, the chief engineer. He was the chief architect, architect yeah. at that time, yeah. after Deolalikar. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> the committee then turned down the proposal by Gill and myself for extensions to the National Archives. After the DUAC was formed, the Delhi Urban Arts Commission, of which my father was the first secretary in 74, <clears throat> The Central Vista Committee declined in importance, but it still exists and can put a spoke in the wheels of any Vista-related project should any of its members be so inclined. I'm not sure whether the committee still exists or well, not. Well, let's yeah. find out if the committee <laughs> yeah. still yeah. exists. But you know, this gives you an idea of, uh, uh, you see, Nehru did not override uh, Joglikar or the minister, even though he was unhappy with the design of the buildings. Nehru functioned in a democratic manner and where he could intervene in design terms like with my father, with Rabindra Bhavan, he did and helped, you know, create a, a modernist idiom which was to his uh, liking. So, Ram, I mean, if, if you could just put it in, uh, uh, in a chronological form, you yeah. know, these days we speak about chronology a lot. So, it's, it starts from the Renaissance. Yeah to the modernist Nehru's 
views of, uh, of uh, modern India and of course modern Indian architecture and eventually lands up here. See, for instance, this is 1959, that's uh, the Mazar of Maulana Azad. And um, this was built at a very historic site in front of the Jama Masjid. And what uh, uh, my father did is take the arch proportion from the masjid, from the entrance, and abstract it into this thin shelled cross vault concrete. And Nehru loved this, and this was this was the kind of Indian modernism that Nehru liked, oh. because it had a root in, in in Indian aesthetics and in Indian building traditions, but was using modern material with a modern vision. That's the photograph of uh, Habib Rahman and Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru. Oh. So what is he showing? Yeah, this was uh, 1961. You see, when you're talking about the whole notion of um, Indianism or Indian style in modern architecture, uh, Rabindra Bhavan is actually a key uh, moment in that whole debate. Because the first building that my father did looked like an office building. Which one? Uh, of Rabindra Bhavan. Okay. Now, these were being built to commemorate centenary of Tagore in 1961 and they were to be cultural centers they were being built in all the state capitals so they were to be libraries theaters uh, performing arts uh, centers uh, so this was the one in delhi and nehru looked at the first model and got very upset he said this looks like an office building and this doesn't look like what you have done with molana azad's mazar or gandhi ghat in calcutta which had an Indian uh, idiom to them, but they were totally modernist buildings. You know, they were not pastiche that you just put a chhajja uh, or something randomly on the building. So he uh, forced my father to redesign it in consultation with Nehru actually. And that ended up becoming Rabindra Bhavan. Oh, wow. Now the material used in that building was very different from what he had done for the office buildings, which were quite cheaply built and quickly built mm -hmm. at that time, because we had very little, limited yeah. resources, you know, in those first decades after independence. So this is a key moment because it also shows how uh, focused Nehru was actually on architecture, architectural style and urbanism. He had that aesthetics of... Uh, yeah, urbanism. not just that, but you see, he uh, even had a sense of, uh, of the urban. He breaks down the uh, western wall or the southern wall of uh, Purani Delhi, which was still there at Independence to make the Fleet Street, not Fleet Street, the uh, business district where the stock exchange comes up, the banks come up, Delight Cinema comes up. So that wall was broken down. Then he built Fleet Street, uh, which is where all the newspaper offices were, ITO. Okay. <coughs> Indian Express, Patriot, uh, Times of India, you know, they were all based on that one street. And in that ITO area, he also set up all the new buildings for government which were the U University Grants Commission, Income Tax Office, uh, you know, all the buildings which were needed for the new government to function were set up in ITO. Now, see, that's the difference between putting all that kind of building in uh, Central Vista. So, Ram, before we move out, I, I, I think uh, one of the reasons why we are at your place, I mean, we could have easily got you at the Central Vista, yeah. and uh, which, we, uh, which our viewers must know, is that this house is a treasure trove. So can you just dig into some of the... Oh, of sure, the sure. So this is, you see these, yours, I mean. these uh, trunks that you see here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're all filled with my father's and mother's archives. Yeah. And let, uh, let us also inform that your mother was the first uh, Miss India. Yeah, so that's yeah. my mother. The yeah, photograph really. that my father wow, took wow. Uh, in Calcutta. And uh, you see, this is the kind of... I mean, this is a very shoddy archive, but this is uh, this was an issue of Design Magazine on the Delhi Zoo, okay. which was designed by my father. Yeah. But here you've got, you know, many of his buildings. These are all his photographs yeah. of the housing, some of the plans. 
That's Rabindra Bhavan, which was the key. So you see this, this kind of material, there's a lot of Delhi's history here. This is Curzon Road Hostels. Just continue our discussion I mean, yeah. at, at your house. Uh, I think uh, uh, I mean, this is something very important that our viewers must know. In fact, the country must know that the whole process of redevelopment has something to do with the political, ideological mooring of, of the government. And you know, and that was very clear, as you have pointed out, from the Latins to the Nehruvian era, right. and now to what is called the Modi era. Right. So, I mean, what, what do you deduce out of it? I mean, I mean, I mean no, I think uh, you see uh, these buildings we've been talking about, yeah. Shastri Bhavan or Vigyan Bhavan, yeah. etc., which were built post 50s. Yeah. They may not be great buildings okay. architecturally, but you know, these are buildings that we have grown up with. Yeah. So we have a cultural yeah. memory okay. and so, uh, you know, it becomes part of your livable, city. Livable history. Yeah, yeah, it's a cityscape. Yeah. And you know, many cities, you don't have buildings which are necessarily great buildings, yeah. but yeah. they become lived in, mm -hmm. people get used to them. Yeah. Yeah. You have grown up your whole life. Yeah. Uh, either going to the buildings or having pan outside or, you know, they are there, You're, they're familiar. Also, Shastri Bhavan uh, or uh, Udyog Bhavan has those murals by Satish Gujral, you know, which are, which are very important art, art, art historically for that period, because that was when public art was being done. Now, uh, you see, to destroy cultural uh, uh, resources like the National Museum and the Indira Gandhi National Center and replace them huge, the way, it's a huge space yeah. to replace them with an office building is a complete disaster because you're taking away you know an important cultural resource which is for the people and Indira Gandhi Center you've got those open lawns where they have these cultural festivals exhibitions yeah. all the time uh, you're going to remove that from the center of Delhi and put up these buildings which are identical blocks, mm -hmm. which is a very fascist idea actually. Now, just hold on, hold on. Yeah. So, what you are trying to say is, uh, from the Renaissance to the ne modernist Nehruvian era, which we, you said was quite democratic, yeah. to a fascist outlook. Yeah. I mean, that's for the first time I'm hearing it. I mean, what does that mean actually? Well, you know, the, the, the whole notion of fascism, if yeah. you look at the history yeah. uh, in Italy, uh, particularly Germany, when they gained control, yeah, yeah, yeah. they went back to a classicism in architecture, which is very conservative. Mm -hmm. And there was this idiom that they developed, which was, you know, like long, severe pillars, mm -hmm. um, you know, grand buildings, which were imposing buildings. Mm -hmm. Now, what from the plans that we see of Central Vista, you're going to get these identical rectangular blocks, which is going to be very, you know... So the grandeur of, of the... No, and also they're all going to be identical. So you'll get like one after the yeah, other, yeah, 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 yeah. these bureaucratic, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, office buildings, yeah, yeah. which are going to replace the, you know, odd mixed architecture they developed after independence. Yeah. Now that has a certain character of its own. So and, it, of, and it reflects actually a democratic spirit so. by having these different buildings which are in different styles, which are open to the public, the National Museum. You now the other thing is when you're, when you're tearing apart the National Museum, where are you going to put all the art which is inside it for the time that the building is going to be torn down and you know, uh, a museum moved somewhere else? Mm -hmm. And this is highly valuable art which even to take out of a cupboard yeah. to show somebody is difficult to do. And, uh, yeah, yeah. you know, these issues, I think, of cultural memory and of a lived city, which has a certain access to the public, mm -hmm. uh, especially for cultural events and, uh, you know, library, cultural resources, you're eliminating that and making this a babu, uh, babudam city, yeah. which is going to be, uh, you know, uh, cut away from any public access. Mm -hmm. And the other thing which I can't understand, I mean, there was a report in Times of India 
that they were going to build nuclear bunkers <laughs> yeah. you know and, and obvi for the prime yeah, now yeah now obviously that's part of the pro uh, program but the funny thing is you put the president the vice president yeah. the prime minister yeah. and all the babus in this one location in yeah. delhi yeah. so you just need one bomb <laughs> so even in security terms it makes no sense yeah. you know so ram uh, i mean uh, i mean you pointed to something very fascinating to us mm. I mean, the whole the grand idea of uh, exhibiting one's valor or or i mean power uh, power uh, uh, can you draw a parallel between uh, albert speer what he was trying to do for hitler oh, and much. what what bimal patel is trying to do for our uh, our, our indigenous uh, well animals? i think it's a very obvious uh, yeah. comparison because you see hitler uh, don't forget hitler was a failed artist yeah. himself yeah. <laughs> you know watercolorist and uh, oil painter but i don't think our prime minister is a failed artist <laughs> well no but you know failed artist is a very dangerous, <laughs> dangerous. person <laughs> because they are frustrated they are never an artist by the way uh, no maybe he has many other skills yeah <laughs> <laughs> no i think the equivalents with the, what happened with hitler and albert speer which was which you know who became his kind of favored architect uh, in berlin is very apt in this context because you know again hitler wanted to project this whole notion of aryan purity and aryan yeah, power yeah, I mean, that's very through this uh, uh, through this very grandiose building project which was harking back to ancient rome mm -hmm. you know the architecture is a theater set to depict power mm -hmm. and albert speer worked on the uh, stadium mm -hmm. where uh, uh, the nuremberg yeah, yeah. where the uh, uh, you know great sports events happen the great nazi rallies happened and there's this amazing story that he designed it to be uh, these rallies to happen at night because it would hide the portliness of the nazis with the night lighting oh that's interesting yeah so you know this whole notion of projecting power through um a grandiosity and you know uh, sort of uniformity of building as a you know these blocks going down where you is actually a fascist idea because you know a democratic architecture has its own yeah own its nuances own, own nuances, own nuances. Kind of, yeah, yeah. some of it is bad some of it is it's good yeah. but it it is democratic yeah, yeah. and it reflects it's very very it is yeah very, it yeah. reflects that spirit of uh, openness of you know a little bit of jugaad yeah. you know happen stance yeah. yeah. now to do these very linear buildings is is actually a, 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 a example of fascist control okay. through architecture of urban space but tell me ram i'm the last thing that i want to know i mean uh, a uh, are all uniform i mean all sorts of uniformity uh, leads to towards fascism and b if you would i mean this one single point that point because indian fascism ought to be different from the italian European. fascism or the european fascism yeah and here it has to be quite ingrained to the whole bunch of hindutva ideologies you know so this architecture also has to come uh, closer to that i mean do you have anything to say on that you no know, you see this idea of hindutva ideology uh, you can see that more in the new temples that are being built okay. like the akshardham etc uh, you know we have a great tradition of temple building including contemporary Which But are, I've seen Bimal Patel's uh, presentations, maybe, yeah. where he sp 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 speaks about the triangle, you know, coming up instead of the, uh, the circle, the, the circular parliament. Yeah, it will be triangular, and he speaks about the the three uh, uh, gods. I mean, the uh, Brahma, Vishnu. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, don't you think? I mean, well, you know, you once you get into that, the funny joke is yeah. you see the triangle uh, apparently according to Vastu traditions yeah, yeah. is not a good shape. <laughs> <laughs> and jawahar bhavan which was built by the congress yeah, yeah. is a triangular building yeah, yeah. and the congress never moved into it <laughs> because of vastu issue okay. so if you're building <laughs> so a so parliament which funny, is yeah. triangular yeah, yeah. you know this vastu uh, yeah, yeah. issue is yeah. there but you see this this whole um, idea of uh, hindutva uh, building yeah. of modi yeah. is a sort of misnomer because partly what modi is trying to do you know by tearing down the hall of nations for instance of rajyavan mm -hmm. which was a great modernist mm -hmm. structure mm -hmm. in our history mm -hmm. and we couldn't save it even though we tried for years yeah. to try and save it as a you know great cultural resource 
um, and it didn't happen. You see, Modi's, when you read the language that they use, which is to build something iconic okay. and world class, yeah, yeah. now his idea is to project, you know, some sort of, uh, uh, you know, fancy, modernist, glass covered, uh, you know, steel. The era. Yeah, yeah, the, 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 the so called. Huh. Yeah, yeah. Now, I think that that actually is a very regressive, lower middle class attitude. Because it's, you're thinking that something like that is a world-class building. Okay. Whereas you're not thinking in terms of architectural. Okay. You see, when Nehru brought in so modernism... So how do you link it to the whole concept of fascism I mean, that, that you pointed out? Well, in, a, in many ways, you see, uh, fascist ideology is actually very simple. Mm -hmm. It is a question of uh, controlling population through symbols which are either political or okay. cultural or architectural which are actually quite simplistic. Okay. So this whole okay. notion that you build something which is grand and on a big scale yeah. and identical yeah. Yeah. that this projects, it's actually a very simple okay. notion and that, that is the, uh, you know, that is the unfortunate aspect of fascist ideology. Thank you Ram. Uh, uh, well, I mean, thank you so much once again. And uh, I think this is a new facet that has come to light. I mean, we spoke about the, uh, the different facets, right, from Renaissance to the democratic uh, uh, construction of the Central Vista, and now to why the whole idea of redevelopment of the Central Vista mm -hmm. is linked to the idea of fascism. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah, thanks. Thank you.